How's everyone doing? Hey, everyone at Casual Connect wants to be an 800-pound gorilla, am I right? I think so. It doesn't sound like an enthusiastic group. If you haven't had ke caffeine yet, I'm your caffeine. So what do I mean by that? An 800-pound gorilla means that you've found that hit, that one thing that is a, the next mass phenomena. And of course, you're right now probably trying to come up with the next freemium game on Facebook, Canvas, Android, iOS, launching game after game after game, trying to find that next hit. Now the reality is there's huge competitors, that's what we'll walk through today, that can outspend you on marketing and people. So you can keep going and trying to do the same thing over and over again, or perhaps there's a different way. So that's what this talks about today. My name is Matt Hewlett. I run GameHouse, a leading company in cross-platform casual games located here in the intergalactic headquarters of Casual Games, Seattle, Washington. Shout out for Seattle. Yes. Okay. So the agenda today is to talk about really first the landscape of games, both social on Facebook and on mobile. And then we'll talk about your odds of actually being the 800 pound gorilla and then discuss some strategies that will help you hopefully in how to pursue your dreams and be that 800 pound gorilla. So let's set the stage first. So last year, I think in this very same stage, Sean Ryan who runs games at Facebook said that uh, this was the year that casual games take off. And boy, was he right. So if you look at app data year over year, Arcade has grown 490% year over year in terms of traffic. Casino has grown 90% year over year in terms of traffic. There are 230 million people on Facebook playing games, approximately a quarter of all of Facebook. And on an du unduplicated basis, 400 million people are playing games on Facebook. So half of Facebook's audience is playing casual games and relatively the same size on mobile. So never before, and I don't have to tell you guys, never before has it been a great time to be doing what we're doing today. That's fantastic. So if you're, not, if you're probably like me, I'm, in fact, I'm in the midst of transforming a traditional PC download business into a freemium social business. And if you're like me, you realize that building games as a product is very different than building games as a service. You have to hire slightly different types of people. You have to have BI folks. You have to have systems at scale. You basically have to not only build a fantastic innovative game, but you actually have to transform the way that you run your company more so than you've ever done in the past. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the landscape that we're talking about today. So what's going on with the business model? Now, I don't think anyone here is going to tell you that the future is paid. In fact, I think we all know that the future is not paid. So if you look at, this is data from App Annie and XYO Logic. If you look at the data in terms of top rankings and where titles are moving in terms of business model across all the popular categories and genres in gaming, you'll see that paid is actually on the decline. Is it because people are being transported to Mars and not playing games? Absolutely not. Games are actually taking off in freemium. Freemium now is actually 80%, excuse me, two to one more popular than paid. About 80% of overall gaming and mobile now is on the iOS platform, which is fantastic. Now, the other thing that you'll notice with these green bars is that some of these categories are taking off very rapidly. In fact, in the hidden object category, there's still a little bit of growth in paid available still, but you see that there's a little bit of growth in freemium. Well, those two, those two uh, players in that space are Mystery Manor from Game Insight and Disney's Gardens of Time. And those companies have been around not only a really long time on that, on that platform, but they're also not the incumbents in this space. They're not the traditional competitor. In fact, if you look at all of the categories that are growing, it's not necessarily true that the incumbent in the traditional paid space becomes the winner or is the fast-growing company. So the good news is fast-growing, nimble companies can win. In fact, uh, and I'm sure Dean Takahashi is here somewhere, at, at the Venture Beat Mobile Beat Conference, Mark Pink has predicted in the next five to 10 years, a new innovative company in the mobile space could take off organically and change the whole landscape of the marketplace. If you take that data and also look at what's happening outside of our space, you see amazing things happening with like Kickstarter. Look at the Ouya Android-based console that raised over $3 million in two days 
uh, taking on the top three console folks. There are massively interesting things happening for companies that are nimble. And in fact, I would call companies that are nimble and very fast, I call us the monkeys of the space. We're very nimble. So why am I calling us monkeys? I don't mean to discredit us. It's cool. So let's first use some imagery from, from Darwin, not, not to make any religious references, but in terms of analogies. So right now, most of you are in the primordial soup. Yuck. The primordial soup is made up of this. There are 120,000 active games on iOS right now. 120,000 games. Going after about 200 million plus worldwide gamers uh, for about a revenue of about $5 billion. On Facebook Canvas, there's about 5,000 games on Facebook. And it is a very, very crowded, messy place to be. Not many of you are going to actually evolve to be what I call the monkeys. The monkeys in the space are, I would call, the mid-tier companies that are in the 10 to 40 size ranking on either Facebook or iOS. Those companies are actually very nimble. They know how to use tools. They're starting to work in tribes, understand specialization, and they're very nimble to the ways of the marketplace. Very few of you are going to actually evolve from primordial soup to a monkey. In fact, it was such a small, small number. I didn't want to put it in the slides because it was somewhat depressing. Very few of the monkeys will actually evolve to be the 800-pound gorilla. And we've seen this to date. Some of us who've been in the casual space here, and maybe this gentleman's in the audience, have grown to be a gorilla in the space. If you look at, for example, King has grown from zero to number two in the Facebook space in an amazing way. So you could argue that King has actually been able to migrate from a monkey to a gorilla. And of course, there's always the T-Rex. And the T-Rex is the big players in the space that are the folks that can outspend you in marketing and teams. And that's kind of like the Zingas or the EAs of the world. In fact, there is some opportunity to evolve out of the primordial soup and get eaten in a good way. So if you're actually evolving out of the soup and have a hit, you could be eaten by one of these T-Rexes, like OMG Pops Draw Something. It was a good, it was a good way to be eaten for the investors and, uh, and the employees of that business. The other side of the T-Rex, the predator that destroys everything in its path, is they could also destroy you. For example, getting in the Ville space is probably not the ideal strategy in that environment. So is all hope lost? Should you not try to actually go for the brass ring? That's not the point of this presentation. The point of this presentation is to figure out how can you actually break through? And the two big things to break through are discoverability and innovation. Easier said than done. So as a game developer, you have to step back and decide how are you going to approach the market. So you have an approach of Facebook, Canvas, or you have an approach on mobile. Or you have an approach on both. You could try to do both. On Facebook, it's extremely expensive to run a games as a service. It's easier, though, to iterate. You have no submissions process that you have on op app stores. And in addition to that, you can iterate very quickly and federate customers across your games and cross-pollinate. Those are things you don't get to do as well on Android and iOS. On iOS, in particular, you have the submission process and you also have monetization that's about 2x Facebook Canvas, but you have the discoverability issue. In the middle of that, you have Facebook that can provide some leverage for you. For example, Facebook-connected games tend to do better in iOS because of Facebook's promotion of those games and their Facebook iOS app, and then uh, consequently their adaption and incremental uh, um, improvements on Facebook App Center in 15 different countries. These are all things that can help you be an 800-pound gorilla. But the problem with being an 800-pound gorilla with a small developer is that there's a massive amount of tools that you have to start thinking through. And if you try to do all of those things at once, it's going to be very, very, very difficult to do. So let's step back. So not only do you have to think about building a great game, you also have to think about all the different variants. So think about all the different things you have to do in building a game for these platforms. The APIs are changing all the time. In fact, there's advantages to being first mover on some of those API advantages. For example, when Facebook launches a local feature, wouldn't it be really cool to build uh, a, a localized feature in your game so people could play not only just in theory as a community, but face to face and do some unique things there. But that's again an expertise that you need to have. Think about the 300 flavors of Android you need to support. That's not easy. Think about all the different form factors, the audio processors, all that stuff you need to support. 
Think about all the monetization things, all the localization things you have to do. There's a tremendous amount of work that you have to do as a developer. And I would suggest impossible to do all yourself. So you have to figure out ways in which you can buy, build, or partner those relationships. Did, did anyone see a T-Rex? That's the best acting I can do. I did, uh, I was Patrick O'Houlihan in the Leprechaun in eighth grade, and that was my last performance in Kellogg Middle School. Uh, that's the best you're going to get. So, so what do you do? So um, some examples of which you can build tools and partner that we've gone through that could be helpful advice is, first off, it's always good to partner with somebody who is of equal size so that your fates are intertwined and that there's no... Um, lopsided advantage over the partnership. So if you partner with someone very large, the terms get more egregious. So I'd advise you to partner with someone of like size, like size a like size monkey, for lack of a better term. So for example, um, we, we have been working with a developer, Lima Sky, who's the developer of Doodle Jump. We are their publisher for Android. They approached us to work with them on Android because um, Android is extremely complex to work with, not only App Store management, but also all the different Android variants and different performance intricacies on Android. And so they're about number 30 on Android now. They've been as high as number 10. And we work with them very actively to get higher and higher up the charts. And that's an expertise that they felt that they could outsource or partner with us on because they just couldn't do it themselves. In addition, I think what we're all trying to do is actually do simultaneous releases to both Facebook and iOS. And so for the last year, as I've been transforming our business, we've been working on technology to do near simultaneous releases of our games, both on Canvas and iOS, and hopefully in the future HTML5, which admittedly is not there yet. So for, that, for example, we're launching a next version of Collapse Blast, our popular Facebook Canvas game on iOS uh, next month. And so we're excited to do that, and it's an expertise that we've built over time to do cross-platform BI and also entitlement management and back-end management. So in conclusion, and then we'll take questions, uh, this is really the dawn of a new era. There's never been a better time to be in the casual game space. I think we, we all know that. Of course, everyone has realized that, and it's a very crowded space. And you have to innovate and solve for discoverability. And I would suggest to you, the best route forward to build, building an innovative game is also to partner. And to partner with somebody who's of equal size that wants to work with you. In fact, if you want to talk to some very great game professionals for some advice, talk to our booth folks who know Download Mobile and Social quite well, and we'd be more than happy to talk to you. So in conclusion, that's my speech, and I'd love to open it up for questions. <laughs> Any questions? This gentleman over here. Well, the question was, what's the best way to, to address the cross-platform mobile challenge? What? So everyone has a different answer. I think everyone is trying to figure out, for example, if engines like Unity are the right thing to do or alternative ones. Um, we, we have, my own experiences, we're, we're looking at those very carefully. Um, we have a, our own internal tool called Emerge that we use to support uh, multiple platforms, iOS and Android, which, which is proprietary. But I would have you look at solutions like Unity um, or also talk to folks that have their own solutions like us. I think the, what we've learned is I think we're getting two Android requests for new types of devices every, every week now and that each one of those devices isn't quite uh, a template that we can use because there's intricacies in the device. So I would have you talk to someone who has a, a cross-platform dev environment like Unity and or someone like us who's done some of that work in a proprietary way. It's a good question. The 300 flavors of Android. Any other questions? There's one way in the back. You're going to get your exercise. Sorry, couldn't hear. Old age. Effective way. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think is the most effective way to make sure your app gets discovered in an ex increasingly crowded app store? Right. So, 
um, what's happening, there's a long-winded answer, is the, the cost per install on, on any, if you take the iOS environment, has gone up massively because of both outside capital coming in to raise the rates um, as well as increased competition. And um, if you're trying to spend your way into that market as an as a early developer, as a small developer, I think you're going to have some problems. I think there's, there's been some really good networks out there that you should talk to that have been helpful. But I also think you just need to focus on be, building an innovative game. I think there's some things that I've seen developers starting to do now in terms of creating buckets of games, kind of skin versions of something that's worked in the past that won't be successful. I think you need to focus on innovation. I think you need to ask yourself, how do you build a game that can grow organically? And how do you build uh, social viral loops in your game to ensure that to happen? And I think turn-based gaming in casual is a big opportunity um, that hasn't really been exploited yet. And I would start focusing on building those innovations. And I also start focusing on building Facebook Connect and Facebook leverage into your games as well. So it's helped well for Playtika, Slotomania, and some of the other top games of getting good Facebook Connect leverage in their game. But I wouldn't focus so much on spend. I think the large guys are obviously raising their rates, and they're not going to go down anytime soon. So if you're trying to outspend them, I wouldn't play that game. It's a little bit like the early days of the web. The, the biggest guys in Google AdWords always won. So I just focus on building the most innovative game and, fo and focus on those platform leverage points that you can use to help grow your, your, your app. Question in the middle. Hi, I was just uh, wondering if you agreed with the uh, Paul's keynote this morning about uh, the PC downloadable market and if that's a growing space and a good place to be for casual developers. Uh, Paul Thielen, I never listened to Paul Thielen's speeches. It's a joke. Paul's probably in here. Um, no, it's, it's definitely, so, you know, it, it, the PC download space is definitely on, on the decline. It's, it's not a space that's going to grow. I think in the manner, this consumers aren't going away, they're just doing different things. They're, they're playing games on the graph and the app stores. And, um, you know, we've been in the space for quite a long time, have kind of taken a hard pivot to uh, focus on freemium, first on Facebook, Canvas, and app stores. But we've definitely seen it in our own numbers, you just see people playing less. And when you ask them why, it's because they're going elsewhere. Their, eye, their eyeball share is going to the other platforms. How fast is that decline? It's up for debate, but it's definitely on a secular decline. And the good news is a lot of those same games, whether um, it's cloud, whether it's freemium, can be consumed and enjoyed in other platforms. But the manner in which people actually access that content's definitely changed. People don't want that content in the same manner they used to. They want it in different ways. Great question, and it was not a planned question. And this is the last question, apparently. I, I, and we're gonna. This is. You know, I'm already stammering. What do I do about the man crush? Uh, if everyone can hear this, Ron Powers of PopCap has just declared that he has a man crush on me. So look, um, on a on a download side, we're you know strong number two, number three, and we're we're very aggressive. We're very aggressive um, because we are one of those monkeys in the tree. So we're willing to focus on a small number of partners and work with them very, very hard. For example, we work with PopCap um, on the download channel and they don't work with other folks. So we're willing to do things that are unique and different on that side. Um, we are not capitally, uh, we don't have a capital constraint. We're part of a public company that has a lot of cash and we're willing to make smart bets. And we're also very adept at mobile. We've been in the mobile space for eight years. At one point, we were on every Java Brew device, and now we support every three, 300 different variants in Android. I think we have a unique expertise there to take your games cross-platform. So I think we're one of the more nimble folks in this space and willing to work with people in a non-templatized way, in a very developer-friendly way, which I think is a more unique approach than some of the other folks you might talk to. That's, that's about as salesy as I can get after you said I, you have a man crush on me. I think that's the last question for time. Thank you very much, everybody.